Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this oversight hearing. It's been over a year since this committee has held an oversight hearing with the Attorney General, so of course there's much ground to be covered. In that intervening year, many developments at the Justice Department have raised serious questions about whether the Department is putting politics before the interests of the American people. These are serious issues, and I plan uh, to ask a number of questions along that line. I'm extremely disappointed in the Justice Department's response to my inquiry into the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. I sent a letter in January about allegations from whistleblowers that our government was allowing guns to be Ill illegally smuggled to Mexico. The Department claimed the whistleblower allegations were false and that, quote, ATF makes every effort to interdict weapons that have been purchased illegally and prevent their transportation to Mexico. I personally express my concern to the Attorney General about the accuracy of the Department's replies in our telephone conversation just this Monday. So I was stunned that just a few hours after our conversation, the Department sent another letter repeating the denial in slightly different words. According to Monday's letter, quote, ATF's Operation Fast and Furious did not knowingly permit straw buyers to take guns into Mexico, end of quote. It is particularly disturbing that the Department would uh, renew its denial at this late date in light of the growing evidence in support of the allegations. Documents and witness testimony show that the AFT allowed the sale of semi-automatic weapons to many straw purchasers even after it knew that the guns they previously purchased were recovered in Mexico. Worst of all, on December 15, 2010, Border Patrol agent Brian Terry was killed in an incident at the border where two of these weapons that the ATF knowingly allowed to be sold to criminals were found at the crime scene. At best, the ATF was careless in authorizing the sale of thousands of guns to straw purchasers. At worst, our own government knowingly participated in arming criminals, drug cartels, and those who later killed federal agents. The department argues that the congressional inv inv investigation of these allegations threaten the ongoing criminal prosecutions of straw purchasers. Yet the department and the ATF chose to wait and watch those same straw purchasers do uh, business for over a year before charging them with any criminal conduct. It was only after the death of Terry that the straw purchasers were finally charged. I take exception to the notion that Congress must hold off on an investigation on the grounds that discovering the truth could hinder prosecutions. The goal of a trial is to search for truth. If our system of justice works that way, it should, then, uh, that, as it should, the department cannot ultimately prevent the truth for, from coming to light. Congress should not allow its fact-finding efforts to be stonewalled just because uh, the details might be embarrassing to certain officials in the department. The conduct in question by both ATF and the department is serious. It may have led to the death of, of at least one federal agent and countless other crimes in U.S. and Mexico. The department should not stonewall Congress or seek to intimidate whistleblowers or other potential witnesses in congressional proceedings. This cannot simply be swept under the rug. I plan to continue my work with the help of Congressman Issa and get to the bottom of who signed off on this operation that failed so tragically. In addition to the AFT matter, I want to discuss leaks of classified information. Attorney General Holder has publicly stated that, quote, unauthorized leaks of classified and other sensitive information are a real threat to our national security. Uh, continuing to quote, to the extent that we can find anyone, anybody, involved in breaking American law who has put at risk the assets and the people that I have described, they will be held responsible. They will be held accountable, end of quote. Unfortunately, these statements do not appear to represent the realities at the department when it comes to prosecuting those who uh, leak classified information. Just this week, it was reported in the press that the department had dropped the prosecution of former uh, justice attorney uh, Thomas Tam, who admitted to leaking classified national security information to the New York Times. I am concerned that the decision not to prosecute anyone related to this specific leak may indicate a reluctance to enforce the law. 
Leaks of classified information threaten the lives of our agents and allies in the field. They also threaten the integrity of our government, especially in foreign relations conduct. I want to ask the Attorney General about this decision not to prosecute one of the Department's own because it is starting to look like there may be a double standard for leakers at the Department. I would also like to discuss what appears to be a new failed IT procurement at the Department. The Integrated Wireless Network, IWN, was recently suspended by the Department of Justice and it appears that the project will end without completing its original goal to integrate the wireless radios for all federal law enforcement agencies. I'm concerned that this program is starting to look like a lot of other failed IT programs at the Department, hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' uh, dollars uh, uh, with nothing to show for it. Uh, I, I'm glad that the Attorney General is here so we can discuss these things. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.